The case against Robert Durst. It's been nearly 40 years since the disappearance of the real estate mogul's first wife, Kathleen, but the world is still enthralled by the story and by the subsequent murders that have shadowed him. The latest wave of public interest in the case stemmed from the 2015 HBO documentary series, The Jinx. That series saw Durst arrested the day before the finale aired due to what was called a, quote, on-air confession to the 2001 murder of Durst's close confidant, Susan Berman. The Berman trial is set to begin in September amidst allegations of edits that throw a jaundiced eye on the HBO series. The multimillionaire is expected to plead not guilty. Some 19 years ago, then Westchester District Attorney Janine Pirro reopened the Kathleen Durst murder case. Pirro's prosecution plan relied on Berman's testimony. Judge Janine is not shy about her feelings toward Durst and the case against him. I had a chance to chat with Judge Pirro, and I asked her about why it was this case that consumed her. You know, it was 1999, and if you can visualize this, I am the sitting DA, and I'm sitting at my desk, and two of my senior guys come in and they say, boss, we got a tip from some, you know, dirtbag sex offender. He says there's a woman's body in a lake. And I, I said, okay. And I'm writing, and there's a phone blinking and all kinds of stuff going on, obviously. And they say her name was Kathleen Durst, and her husband is Robert Durst, and, uh, you know, the Durst. And I said, no. So did you know any of this story beforehand? Nothing. And that's what's so incredible about it. And I address that in the book, He Killed Them All. And I said, well, do you have reason to believe this tip? And they said, no. I said, well, tell me about her. They said, she's a fourth year medical student about to graduate. And her husband waited five days to report her missing. That's so all I needed to hear. I was all in at that point. If you recall, I started the first domestic violence unit in the nation. And so my antennas went up, and that began a journey, an odyssey. I mean, I kicked the bee's nest. And people have been stung for the last 15 years with this one, including me. There was an investigation before this came across your desk. When you started looking, you, you saw, okay, this wasn't new. This case has been floating out there a while. What, what, what was the level and the extent of that investigation? Why did it not go anywhere? Well, you know, you call it an investigation. I think any cop uh, studying law enforcement 101 crime scene police investigations would say it was a joke. It was 1982, New York City, one of the richest families in New York. Their daughter-in-law goes missing, and there's two articles in the Times about it. There's virtually no discussion other than, you know, she was in New York, and the doorman saw her, and... Uh, um, she probably ran off with another guy, and she may have had a hangover. It was easy, Jack, back then to think that women were number one dispensable, and they were sluts. Of course she ran off with another guy, but no one knew who he was or, you know, what he looked like. I mean, it was all made-up stuff. And so when I got the file from my staff, I said, this is crazy. They didn't investigate in Westchester, the NYPD. You know, they just said, okay, yeah, I'm sure he put her on the train. They didn't talk to any of the neighbors that Durst said, you know, could give him, you know, some alibi-ish, you know, backup. So I and, knew and do you then. think most of this was, I mean, you talked about some other factors and how we viewed women, sadly, as victims mm -hmm. in, in crime. You know, I was a prosecutor around the same time, right. and, and I know how difficult it was. Right. But, but do you think more of this was because of the Durst family name? People were just saying, okay, we're just going to kind of let this one go. Let me ask you a question, Jack. If, God forbid, Donald Trump's daughter-in-law disappeared, do you think that if someone said, oh, she probably ran off with another guy, that would be the end of it? NYPD would say, oh, okay. Uh, I mean, there was no search team. There was nothing. There wasn't, you know, the crying husband. And that's what leads us to homicide number two. The husband's best friend, Susan Berman, is a spokesperson who says, she ran off with another guy. Right. And, and all of a sudden, so people follow this all. Yeah. So Susan Berman is sort of working as the spokesperson. It's fine. She just ran off. Right. Susan Berman gets subpoenaed to, to, to testify. No, or, she's, or not she's not no, She's going to be interviewed. She's going to be interviewed. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Susan Berman ends up with a bullet in her head. A uh, bullet in the back of the head execution style. And everyone says, oh, oh, you know, her father was uh, Davey Berman uh, in uh, L.A., not in L.A., in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. He was a mobster. She wrote the book Easy Street, interviewed on the Today Show. Uh, and at the end of the day, they said, oh, it's probably him. And I'm like, wait a minute, L.A., 
Robert Durst killed her. And here's the thing. There is a cadaver note that is key in the Jinx documentary, and it's written in green ink. And what people don't know is that Robert Durst only wrote in green, green ink. ink. Green, the color of money that he loved so much. I have all these little this, secrets these in my are, book. The, I mean, these are literally, if you made these up, if this was fiction, you'd say, that's, that's kind of too much to yeah. put into that. All right, so, so I, I'm going to get to the, to, uh, well, let me ask you this now. Mm -hmm. So you're part of the, this documentary. Yeah. What did you think when you first saw that scene and heard him say those words, I killed them all? You know, I was sitting in Andrew Jarecki's apartment uh, to watch the last episode chapter and uh, with a lot of the players, you know, with the McCormick family, Kathleen's brother and, and uh, the niece who uh, looks just like Kathleen looked uh, in 1982. And I remember saying to myself, of course you did, you dirtbag. I knew it all along. And there was some quiet sobbing to my left. And I describe all this in the first chapter of my book, He Killed Them All. And I said to myself, you know, there was never a question. All the indicators were there. You know, here's a guy who, you know, his brother later says, oh, you know, his dogs were disappearing. He was probably killing his dogs. He called them Igors. Um, he was a guy who killed when he needed to. He knew that we were going to speak to Susan Berman in L.A., we being the Westchester DA's office and my task force. And so you say to yourself, well, how did he know that? because I had it locked down quiet. There was a leak from a state trooper, and I talk about this years later, and I was, and my team was livid, and I said, I can't believe it. He let Durst know. And what you do, Jack, and you know this, is you save the most important person for the end of the investigation. You get all of the little information from this one and this one and this one, and you go loaded for bear with that key witness. And she was, he knew it, he sent her $25,000 checks before we got there to shut her up, and he killed her. So he kills her. There is your, your witness that you're counting on yeah. who is now no longer with you. That, was that the end of that investigation? I mean, you, you did a real investigation this oh, time yeah. around. But basically, was that, did you hit the, a stone wall at that point in time? You know, as I recall, it was about that uh, time that, you know, we kind of got even more fired up because I said, this guy could be a serial murderer. And lo and behold, within 10 months, we get a call. Robert Durst is charged with murder in Galveston, Texas. And I'm saying to myself, Galveston, that's that song. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell. And uh, uh, so I sent my guys down there. I went down there as well. And what I wanted when I went down there, I wanted to speak to the DA and say, I need closure for Kathleen's family. It's been since 1982. It's now 2001. We need closure. We never found her body. He never admitted a thing. This trial in Texas, it, I think <laughs> bizarre might be the best way to describe it. He, he, uh, he admits that he dismembered his friend Mars Black, but says he didn't kill him. And a, a jury, and again, I, look, I didn't cover it. I didn't see all the facts and the details, but it seemed like a strange verdict to the jury to come back and say not guilty of, of the murder. I knew from the get-go this was about money and power in the criminal justice system, perverting the scales of justice. And so you've got Robert Durst going to Galveston, paying a million and a half dollars for the best lawyers he could find, who sold a bill of goods to these half-wit jurors, who to this day think that I chased Robert Durst, and that's why he had to kill and chop the body up, because Jeannie Pyro from New York, well, she herself forced Bobby to do this. If she had only kept her mouth shut, none of this would have happened. That's at the trial. So every day, Jack, I'm getting calls from the press. What do you say to this? And, what, and every time my press people came in, they'd have to peel me off the ceiling. <laughs> so do you think there'll ever be any resolution of the Kathleen Durst case? Will we ever know what happened to her? You know, Jack, I believe that sooner or later we will. At least now we know he said he killed them all. I believe she's in the Pine Barrens. I've done many visits there. I have my investigators go there. You know, he made calls from the Pine Barrens. You know, he was in a laundromat. Um, here's the scariest part of it. I think he chopped her up because when asked in the jinx, what were they looking for in the lake? That lake, when I was initially looking for a body, he says, not my wife, not my wife's body. He says, body parts.
You know, so if you read the book, you'll see there's a lot of things that I saw in the mm -hmm. jinx that you might not have caught. And that's when I said, yeah. I'm writing right. this book. Well, it, it is. It's a it's a fascinating book. It's a great read. It's, Thanks. you know, to, to think that it's not fiction is, is somewhat breathtaking, but uh, a good book for anybody. Janine, always good to see you. Good to see you, Thank Jack. Thank you for joining us. Thank and you. for you folks out there, a reminder, the HBO documentary, The Jinx, can be seen on HBO Now. And Judge Janine Pirro can be seen Saturday nights at 9 p.m. on Fox News Channel.